Hi, it's Rob Moore here. How hard should you sell? Now, this is a live video and audio podcast for extroverts, introverts, salespeople, and non-salespeople. And I've got about 14 points to cover, and I think, I uh, hope you're going to learn something from this episode. So the first thing is, no one's going to sell your stuff for you, and no one's going to sell you for you, other than you, better than you, other than your case studies and testimonials, uh, but that's something for the future. So I remember when I was single and I was an introverted artist, uh, I used to sit in my house painting all night listening to um, Rammstein or Radiohead if I wanted some uplifting and cheer myself up music. And, and, and I used to wonder, why am I single? Why does nobody love me? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to start the podcast this way, but I'm, I'm making a point here. And, and I actually used to wish that people would come and knock on the door I go, hi, Rob, I'm your future wife. Oh, look at this. You know, ooh, yeah. come and take me. It never happened, funnily enough. Uh, and I had friends who'd go out there and, and they'd approach people and they'd get knocked back, they'd get knocked back, and then they'd get a date, and then they'd get knocked back, and then they'd get knocked back, and then they'd get a date. So the reality is, if you are softly, softly, oh, I don't want to sell anything to anyone, I'm worried about rejection, I'm worried about them turning me down, or, you know, oh, they might think I'm pushy. Well, you're never going to get anywhere and you're never going to achieve anything. So I think if you're not getting any feedback from at least a few people saying, uh, oh, you're a bit salesy, you're a bit pushy, you're selling a bit too much. If you're never getting that feedback, you're not selling. You're never selling. And like, you know, OK, you might make a load of money if you've had a really good career your whole life and somehow you've been lucky enough to have a boss who's protected you or you've managed to create value that everyone wanted without you having to sell anything. But most people on the planet, most businesses, most products, you have to go and push it out to the world. You know, you can't, you know, like they say, build it and they will come. No, build it, shout about it and then they will come. But stay with me, especially you introverts, because I've got some things which I'll cover which are more softly, softly. And you don't have to just sell hard um, because selling doesn't have to be hard. You know, hard selling is trying to get someone to buy what you want them to buy that they don't want to buy. Hard selling is not caring about them and caring about getting your commission or your sale. That's hard selling. However, it's done you know, elegantly, persuasively, in a manipulative way, using gimmicky techniques or just being conversational. If you're trying to force feed someone something they don't want, that is hard selling. So effective selling is caring. It is caring enough about what your customer, your client and your prospect wants, finding out what it is that they want, that they need, finding out their values, what's most important to them in their life, and finding a way to package your product to meet their values, linking how your product or service meets their needs and solves their problems. And then it doesn't really matter how you do it. If you do it in a pushy way or an elegant, uh, persuasive, relaxed way, it won't come across hard. Um, but e even if you're sort of trying to be more elegant with selling someone something they don't want, it will come across hard. So hard selling isn't just the pushy nature, it's the relevance or irrelevance of the product or service and how much you care. So here are some techniques then that you can use. So I think it is wise to build latent goodwill that you cash in later. Um, so if you just go and sell first without first understanding, caring or getting to know the individual, that's going to come across hard. So give first. Put good content out in the world on your podcasts, on your live feeds. Inform your clients and educate them in your niche as well as selling them the things that you need. Uh, and what you do is you build up a future sale. You build latent goodwill. But then you've got to cash in that goodwill. Now, there are some of you, the introverts, the givers who don't receive very well, those of you that hold a lot of guilt or hate selling. You're like, give, 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 give. <clears throat> you don't cash in. You've got a, a, a debit card in your hand. You've got three million quid in the bank, but you're not walking to the bank and putting the PIN number in. And if you give, 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 in the end, you get frustrated. You start resenting your market. You can't sustain your overhead because you're not getting any, <clears throat> excuse me, any income. And then you go bust or you have to go and do something else. So, yeah, create the latent goodwill and then cash it in. Um, now, you might decide to do a three to one, a five to one, a 10 to one or a 50 to one ratio. And what I mean to that is three positions or points of giving and then one asking for the sale five 
putting good value out there. One, asking for the money. 50 good outputs and giving, and then one pitch. Now, this varies platform to platform. So if you're on, say, email, or if you're on LinkedIn, you can be like two to one, three to one, maybe five to one. That might be a bit soft. You can directly sell face to face. You can directly sell on email. You can directly sell on LinkedIn because those profiles are more, that's just the way the world has gone so that you can be more, it's more expected in that field. Whereas if I did a podcast and I sold on every episode, I don't sell on any episode, um, you know, that would, um, that would uh, slay the golden goose. Um, so on my Facebook videos, for example, that you're watching, I might sell one in every 100, 150, um, but I do like six a week. So I'm what selling every few months uh, on my podcast. I, I think I've made like three offers in about 239 episodes. This will be so that's much more. Give, 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 ask, give, 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 ask. But, you know, if you're face to face doing one to one selling and you don't ask for the money, you don't make any money. You know, oh, no worries. Go home. Have a think about it. Talk to your wife. Come back to me when you're ready and just pay the money in my bank. Uh, that means your money will run down the A1 or whatever the, the road is up the A1 uh, and you'll, you'll lose the sale. So if you give more value, what you'll generally tend to find is you're building future sales. And in the future, you will get this pull effect where you get incoming money. But it will take a lot more time. If you sell more now, you'll get more money now. But you will have some attrition where you will have some people that you'll sell, sell. And then, oh, well, I don't like this. It's too salesy. Oh, I don't like this. It's too salesy. Let me just remind you what I said at the start. If you haven't got at least a few people giving you the feedback that you're too salesy, you're not salesy enough. Okay. Um, if you don't sell, someone else will. I was the guy that stood at the bar hoping that girls would come to me while all, all my mates said, hey, Rob, look after the drinks. And they all went out and came back two hours later with a girl on either arm. Look at me. Oh, hey, lads, Rob, look at this. Thanks for looking after my drinks. Get the next round in. And I used to think, bastards, why won't, why won't those girls come and speak to me? They never did. They never did. Maybe they will when I'm rich. No. They don't. They won't. They don't need to. I've got a wife. Um, uh, all right, then. So selling really is about finding needs, meeting desires, finding wants, finding pains and then caring enough. I believe selling is caring. Good selling is caring. Hard selling is not caring. So good selling is caring what your customers, clients, followers and fans need in their life, the problems they're having, discovering exactly what that is, being specific getting feedback as to what they would like the solution to be, creating the solution, giving them the solution, giving them the support they need to implement the solution, taking feedback and then creating a version two, which improves the, the solution. That is selling. Now, I have eight stages of selling, which encompasses all of that. Uh, and that's one of the chapters in my book, Money. So that would be, that would, that would be a separate, I'd need to do half an hour on that. So, excuse me, that's a separate thing. Go and find that on my book, Money. If you want to know the eight stages of selling and by, by the way, none of those stages are pushy. <clears throat> All of those stages are respectful. Uh, many of them are questions rather than pitches. So I think you'll find them useful. Um, I would like to encourage some of you who are maybe a bit more introverted that you do have to get yourself a bit uncomfortable um, because what's going to annoy you introverts. Excuse me, I've got a tickly throat. I'm going to have to have a quick cough. <coughs> mm, I talk too much. Those of you that are a bit introverted, um, what you'll find is everyone else is going this, doing the selling and you'll build up resentment. Uh, and, you know, maybe you don't want the attention, um, but there are vehicles in which you can sell effectively, like on podcasts or maybe on the phone rather than face to face or, um, you know, maybe online selling. But you've got to be persuasive uh, and you've got to get yourself out there a bit more and you've got to get a bit more uncomfortable. Um, if you look at many of the greatest world's leaders, they are the greatest salespeople and they didn't start the greatest salespeople, but they had to become the greatest salespeople to be the greatest leaders. And if you think about how good a salesperson Winston Churchill was or Steve Jobs was, um, you know, these people were compelling salespeople. They're selling a vision. They're selling an idea. They're selling an emotion. They're selling an action. They're selling a decision. Selling isn't just about buy my shit um, and, you know, keep buying my shit. Or, you know, me keep nagging you about buy my shit till you buy my shit. You know, it, it's about inspiring people, moving people. Um, sales is a transfer of energy. Sales is a transfer of emotion. 
Uh, and, you know, like I would encourage some of you who are a bit more introverted, you want to get, a, a, you know, push yourself to go down that road and learn those skills. And those of you that do sell well, but maybe you're, you're a bit of a pushy salesperson, try and not just, you know, you, you know, they say, don't they? Oh, selling's a numbers game. You just pick up the phone. You just say, sell, 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 sell. 10x, motherfucker, sell, 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 sell. But actually, if you sell one in every 50 calls, you're pissed off 49 people. And it's really attritional. And most people can't handle that level of rejection. So yeah, okay, you know, you're going to get attrition and you're going to get a numbers game. But actually, why don't you try and be more um, skillful in your selling? Um, Which, uh, again, I share in my eight stages of selling. Now, if you hate selling, you actually hate a version of you that you don't own. Um, So anything that you hate in anyone else uh, is a trait you don't own in yourself. Um, And, you know, you may think I'm not like that and I'm not going to be like that. But everyone would be like that um, if they were pushed and if it was high enough on their values. You know, imagine there was a mother and she had a beautiful daughter and her daughter died of cancer. Uh, And this mother before her daughter died of cancer was shy, retiring and introverted and never said boo to a goose. And now her daughter dies of cancer. She's going to go and sell everything and anyone. She's going to go and create this mission, you know, and go to charities and organisations and put the message out to the whole world. You know, look, I need to help you so you don't lose your daughter. She's not going to be worried about getting rejection. She's just going to go and do it. Because the mission is important enough to her. So if you really hate selling, maybe you don't have a good enough product or service. Maybe you don't have a clear enough mission or vision. Um, you know, or, or, or maybe you just need to you know, look at what you need to own in yourself. Um, and also you can develop your own style. So I, I did a sale yesterday. I ran a two-day podcast media masterclass. Um, so I've, I've just launched, just doing a test launch at the moment. I, um, had a, I've had two of these courses. Um, it's, they're about £3,000. I gave some people a discount. We had 60 people in the first course, about 50 people in the second course, give or take. Uh, And I did the course for two days. And we've recently just launched our podcast media agency. So if people want their podcast uploaded, hosted, if they want to rent our studio, um, if they want to help with the title, the design, the description, you know, the the SEO and the marketing of their podcast, then they can hire us as an agency. And it's it's a new thing. And I've got three levels on that agency. Um, I've got standard, pro and studio pro. And um, on those two courses, at lunchtime on the second day, I just really talked about what it was. It wasn't a pushy sale. Um, You know, there were some elements in there that, you know, were planned. And so I would say I was following a formula as such, but it was very conversational. And um, I've done about £260,000 in sales. Uh, About 60% of that is cash in bank and the rest is in recurring income. Um, And, you know, no one came up to me and went, oh, Rob, that was hard. And I felt really good doing it. I really enjoyed it. And I really felt like the service is really going to help podcasters. I really felt that it was a bargain price. I really felt that it was equitable where we got good value, but they got good value. I felt that we could really pass on some knowledge and skills to them. I felt I felt that I could do JVs with them and really help them, too. And they could help me grow my podcast media agency. And I really felt like it was a win win. And, 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 you know, there was just no yuckiness. And yet I've done 200 and four days worth of work and £260,000 in extra sales. Um, So selling is about finding the right fit, finding the right offer, finding the right product, meeting the needs of the individuals, packaging it well, making it seem like it's good value, you know, a perceived bargain. Um, These are all the things, uh, you know, that that make good selling. So develop your own style, Uh, you know, create really good, compelling offers, Um, you know, give them a really good reason to buy now. Um, and then you don't have to be all yucky about it. Now, if there is pushy salespeople or things about selling that you hate, uh, what can you own in yourself? And I want to give you a bit of an example. Because occasionally, you know, like someone will get through all the gates. So I've got, um, I've got a couple of assistants. I've got an agent. I've got various outsourcers who manage various different of my email addresses. I never answer the phone unless I've got the call booked. But occasionally someone will find a way around. They'll game the system. They'll catch me at the wrong time. They'll phone lots of times. They'll, they'll write a message which will be really well written, which will sort of tease me into responding to them. And if someone gets through, you know, and I'm a bit busy, busy, part of me is like, oh, you know, you got me, you you, you know, you're you're being a pushy salesperson. But then I go, wait a minute, you're bloody good. And um, you've got to admire good salespeople, I think, and own their traits and borrow their traits. And I've got a good example of this. So literally in the first year of setting up my company, Progressive Properties, this would have been in 2007, we pretty much, and he won't mind me saying, and he watches my videos, and he'll probably find out, and I don't tell anyone who he is, um, but he's my secret weapon, he's my agent, 
outsourcer, researcher and general legend all in one. And he stalked us a bit in, in the early days. He used to phone Mark up and get advice off him. And in the end, Mark was like, you, you're going to buy something? And then he'd phone up again in a different voice from a different phone number. He'd put on a different accent. He'd email us, he'd text, text us, he'd find all of our contact details. And it was sort of like on the fence. You know, do I get a restraining order? Or I need to hire this guy. This guy's got skills and he might be pushing my buttons, but he's got skills. Um, and so I hired him and he's been working with us for 10 years and I think he's amazing. So if you're watching, you know, I think you're awesome. Don't ever go anywhere. If you need anything, let me know you're awesome. Uh, and I had to hire him. I had to hire him. I had to admire him, even though parts of the time he was pissing me off. Um, and, and, you know, like if you ever see anyone who's really good at selling, don't go, oh, yucky, disgusting. Oh, go away. Ish. Go, how'd you do that? Teach me some of that and then develop your style around it. So what you do is you use a proven process for selling, but then you put your own personality and style into it to make it unique. And you've got to sell something you believe in, not just the product, but how you sell the product. And if you've got to do hard selling techniques and go and do this right now and you've got to buy it right now or you're a loser, you know, you're a winner if you buy my stuff, you're a loser if you don't. If you don't like that, you, you shouldn't do that. But you can still have the same effect if you have a good model and system. And again, like I said, I share the eight stages of selling uh, in my book, Money. All right, thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. And I also want to let you know that coming soon on the podcast, and I'll do a cheeky little part live feed video on it, I'm interviewing the legend, the worldwide marketing, branding phenomenon that is an author as well of loads of books, pretty much the guru to the best marketers in the world. Uh, I am interviewing Seth Godin. So I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, that's coming very, very, very soon, like in the next few days. So make sure you tune in for that. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.